Hi there, I'm Cherie. I'm Chris. And we're Technomadia. Now, when you're shopping for an RV, especially an older one, you might come across some concerns in different groups and other videos about a 10-year rule that some RV parks have. Now, this 10-year rule isn't a law. It is not a universal rule, but it is pretty darn common. And it is a, a rule that some parks have that no RVs older than 10 years old can stay parked there, can have a site even for just a night. Now, it's not in every RV park. There are plenty of places that do not have this rule. You're gonna find it more common in RV resorts, mm -hmm. um, higher class RV parks. You might even find exclusions for like only uh, class A motorhomes are allowed. Yes. It's, it's in most of the places that we personally like to go are the kind of places that never have a 10 year rule, but even us, we run into it on occasion. And so we'd like to share some of our experiences with it. And is it really something you should stress about? So why do RV parks do this in the first place? Uh, one common reason that we have run across is RV parks that are in areas where there are tenancy laws, where it would make it difficult to evict somebody who's paying them a monthly rent should they quit paying their rent, their RV breaks down and they can't move. So it comes along where they're trying to protect themselves a little bit better from being stuck with an RV that's not paying the rent. Yeah, particularly even if they can evict the tenants, they might not want to be stuck with an old junker RV. Sometimes we've heard from RV park owners who've been left with RVs that physically can't move anymore and are um, need to be towed away. And yeah, I understand that paranoia. It is also kind of sucks because a lot of people have really great RVs that are 10 or 15, 20 years old that are far from old junkers. And another uh, situation you might run into, and it's more like a homeowners association rule where an RV park, cat, uh, when an RV park is trying to maintain a certain look and feel in a class of uh, resident in their RV park or class of, uh, of customer. <laughs> class of fancy looking shiny rigs. <laughs> and, um, you're gonna find it all across the board. And, and particularly with the parks that are just trying to maintain a, a good look and stuff, is if you've got a, a 25 or 30 year old rig that looks awesome, like if, you, if you're driving a Prevo, nobody cares that it's 30 <laughs> years old. But if you've got a, um, um, a five year old or 10 year old mass produced RV that is kind of starting to look really rough around the edges, they might care. So if you encounter this rule in a park you wanna stay at, do contact the park and talk to them. Sometimes they don't even ask if it's off season, they might not care. Uh, if you're just staying for a few nights, they might exempt you from the rules. They might only apply to a monthly stay or a long-term seasonal stay. Um, sometimes just send them photos of your RV yeah. and say, hey, is this okay? Yeah, if you're up front with them, um, they're often very, very good with it. And a, a lot of times some parks, you know, they, they might say it's, they might not say anything at, at, at first and they just keep that rule in their back pocket as an excuse to kick people out if they're trouble. So they might let one older RV stay, but well, they're not liking you. You're seeming kind of not <laughs> quite their clientele. So that's their excuse to push you out the door. So now, um, like I said, it is, does not apply to all RV parks, even all RV resorts. You're not gonna find it to be the norm by any stretch of the imagination. You might find it more regionally based um, just because that is either a, a common practice for businesses in that area or because of those tenancy laws that I talked about earlier. Um, now, we get asked all the time, obviously, we have an older coach. Ours is a 1961 vintage bus conversion. We get asked all the time, do we run into it? Twice in seven years? and both times we were exempted. Uh, what we found is because we've put so much effort into restoring our coach, we tend to be seen not as an old coach, but as a classic restored vintage class. Cool thing. Yeah, the cool yes. thing. Uh, so we tend to immediately get exempt. And most things on our RV are actually newer than five years at this point, because we've redone everything. Yeah, I think the one time we ran into a park manager who wanted to uh, kick us out because we were older than 10 years old, the park owner turned out to be a vintage um, bus fan and overruled him and wanted to get a tour of our RV. So, you know, you do run into that. Now, that said, we tend to love public parks. Uh, we're in a state park right now. We love Army Corps of Engineer parks, county parks, federal parks, um, boondocking. So we spend a lot of time outside of park systems. But even the times we stay in RV parks, we rarely find the rule. And the few times we have found it, it's Usually, easy to talk around. It, it's, it's easy. Just, you know, unless they ask, don't ask, don't tell sometimes works. And you just <laughs> yep. show up and they got to deal with you. Um, so. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Now, if you want to be staying in higher end RV resorts and fitting in with those sorts of rules, then obviously shop for an RV that's gonna fit with, uh, like, 
if you like in a neighborhood all the houses painted beige, well, look for a homeowners association <laughs> that requires all houses painted right. beige. And, and this does get a little dicey if you're buying a rig that's older, like you know, seven or eight year old rig. You're you know you might be facing that cliff, and those are the kind of places you want to stay. Maybe you want to buy a newer rig and try to stay under the wire longer. But I can say after 12 years of full-time travel, seven years in our bus, it's not been an issue for the not style really. of travel that we enjoy. So there you go. Ten-year rule. <laughs>